Greeting, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Stan Houston, and this is Interesting Ideas, and we welcome you to finally, it's Friday, and this is Future Friday, a time where we uh, perhaps reflect on some things that we could do, maybe even uh, give consideration to how we're going to plan or hope for, pray for, and then mostly, if we can, perform in such a way to have a little different or better future. What do we want? What do you want to have, to be, and to do as uh, we come to the future stages of our lives? Well, first of all, it's also good to remember some things, and that sounder is a wonderful memory for me because that is the sounder that was used for many, many years by the BBC, the British Broadcasting Company. And one of the good stages of my life is I was able to spend a good deal of time in London working with them. I wasn't working for them, working with them, trained by them, and uh, I got to the point of enjoying London and knowing a little bit about it and how it lived and worked and all of those good things and uh, learned a lot of radio that was helpful to me. And... uh, I don't know if they would admit it, but they even learned some stuff from me because as they taught me about how the British did it, I was able to demonstrate a little bit more to them how the Americans did it. And uh, in some cases, they found that helpful. (laughs) Wonderful memories. I'm very graced and grateful for that. Well, today, what I want to talk about on Friday is our first loves. That's right, our first loves. And so, that's the program for today. Interesting ideas, it starts right now. As I hope I say quite often, and that is thank you, thank you. I have been graced. I am graced. I've had uh, a remarkable amount of good things happen to me. Now, I've had a lot of bad things happen, too. But I've had, uh, on uh, on the uh, cold deal, a lot more good than difficult and tough. And sometimes what I decided and discovered was that oftentimes uh, the difficult and the tough turned out to be really good things for me. As one of my friends across the hall from the studio told me, he said, Stan, uh, you probably discovered like I did, that sometimes uh, the tougher times were, the smarter I had to become. And I said, I'm going to do a program about that. And he said, well, it's true. Tough times make you smarter. And that is a topic for next time. But uh, I am graced in the fact that in less than a month, my wife Karen and I will celebrate our Oh, my goodness, 56th wedding anniversary. Now, with all the changes of our past move from Arizona to uh, Carolina because of family issues and helping to take care of a daughter and a a grandson, uh, we're not quite sure what we will do to celebrate, but uh, at this age and stage, it'll probably be uh, calm and quiet and perhaps just uh, nice. We'll find a way in the midst of all of that. By the way, I now say to people is I uh, still love and in some cases live in Arizona, but right now we are working and living in Carolina, so I'm from Carizona. And that seems to work. (laughs) Okay. By the way, uh, since we'll be in Carolina, if some of you have some good advice as to how we might celebrate that anniversary, I would love to hear from you. Okay. Now, let me tell you, Karen was not the first girl that I dated, but she was and continues to be the first and only girl that I was ever serious about and still am. And that was just part of the thoughts that came to me again the other day as I was seeking some wisdom from my life experiences that I'm going through and the clients I'm seeking to serve in this new venture. Uh... Yeah, what are my first loves? Now, let me tell you why I do that. I'm increasingly aware, particularly in my coaching with others, that we should pay attention to our first loves. 
You know, most of us have things in our life that caught us quite early, and perhaps we even gave attention to them. But you know, as time went on, we did other things. Uh, We took on a career based on, well, maybe what was popular, what was profitable, maybe what our parents thought, what our peers thought, or what we just happened to fall into. I remember a gentleman telling me, he said, well, you know, I, UPS offered me a good job driving a truck, and it was good money, and so I took the job, and well, and got married, and had a couple of kids, and, you know, the money was pretty good. And I landed up driving a truck for UPS. Now, a number of people do just that. Now, I'm not saying this to be critical of anybody, but, uh, you know, uh, that's what happens to us. Uh, And so, as a result, we need to do that. Now, don't be unrealistic. No matter what, I will never play second base for the Chicago Cubs next to Ernie Banks. I really believed that's what I was made for. Oh, you know, if I could just play second base for the Cubs next to Ernie Banks. Well, of course, that was that was not only a childish dream, that was a childish fantasy. It couldn't have ever happened. And of course, I had nowhere near the ability to be even close <laughs> to a uh, what it would take to do that. So I'm not talking about those kinds of things, but things that perhaps would have given us a little more possibility. Uh, As I said, we took a career because that was what we thought was available at the moment. And then whether we loved it or not, we we pressed on. Uh, And many people became very successful doing that. And they may even, for the most part, even enjoyed it from time to time. However, I was talking the other day with a a gentleman who's done very, very well. And uh, he simply said to me, he said, well, you know what? uh, (laughs) One of my jobs, I found out that I was pretty good at selling insurance. He said, uh, And I wasn't going to be able to play for the Green Bay Packers, so I didn't know what I was going to do because uh, I'd love football, but there was no no career for me in football. And uh, so I I spent the last 40-some years selling insurance. Well, I'm glad for the opportunity. I did well, but I don't miss it. Not at all. Not at all. And there we go. And the fact that most people... Uh, would walk away from the work they do if it was not for the pay tells us something. And that's why we're going partly through. Not only do we make a lot of mistakes with the great resignation and the great lockdown, but as a result, there's just a lot of people who've given up and don't know what to do, and so they are doing nothing uh, as a result of the COVID pandemic and what happened then. And I'm not being critical of these people at all. Indeed, sometimes I'm truly one of them. Uh, We have to do what we have to do. Children need to be raised, and mortgages have to be paid, and just as soon as we're getting into that, then colleges have to be paid for. It seems like we're paying for our kids' college. We just got done paying for our college. You know, yeah, I understand that. And so we have to find a way of creating value for somebody and getting paid. We don't get to follow our bliss. We have to follow the money. I'm also reminded that uh, when we lived in Holland, uh, we studied all the great, wonderful works of art. And from time to time, you'd see a Rembrandt painting of uh, what was uh, not a very attractive, but certainly well-dressed, maybe slightly, maybe more overweight Dutch woman of the 16th or 17th century. Well, why did Rembrandt paint that picture of that woman? Well, it's because she had a husband who was rich, (laughs) and he wanted to give her a picture of herself. And uh, Rembrandt needed the money, and so he did it. And 
That wasn't particularly what he wanted to do that day, but that's what he did. And thank goodness, even that kind of work from such a master turns out to be a masterpiece even though it's not something he really wanted to do or loved to do. That can happen. And there are people who do a lifetime of work doing things that had to be done. And as a result of that, the world is much better because they did what they had to do. So I'm not being critical. Because who am I to be critical of anybody of the choices they've made? As I say, I'm graced. All I am saying that in your life reflections, pay attention to some of your first loves. Uh, as I walked uh, away from <laughs> the uh, apartment the other day, and Karen said, what are you going to do today? And I said, well, I'm going to the studio. I've got a number of radio programs to do. And she said, uh, you really like that, don't you? I said, I love it. I said, you know, <laughs> maybe I should have pursued it full time. It was always a part of my life, and I've done a lot of that and did many years, but maybe I should have just given it my all rather than other things. Who knows where it would have left me or <laughs> it left me or led me. But I'm now doing it again, and I'm very grateful for the opportunity and for the fact that you even listen to me. All I'm saying, pay attention to some of your first loves. Um there was a man who was my uh, co-host on the radio. He did it uh, just as a part-time thing when we were doing some radio in Arizona um, because he kind of liked the idea. And uh, what happened was that uh, the organization that he worked for offered him early retirement. Well, you know what that meant. <laughs> we're going to offer you early retirement. Well, <laughs> It was a forced retirement, obviously. The organization wanted uh, some newer and younger people around who would cost less, and they did the math, and so they offered him a retirement. Well, it was a forced retirement. And he was very unhappy about it, but then he discovered that finally, oh, now he's doing what he's wanted to do since he was 14, take pictures. And you know what? He's even making money. You know, he's not going to get rich, but he's even making money with some of the beautiful photographs that he took of the Arizona world. I'm so happy for him. However, I also know of a top-notch professional who's going through great stress and pleasure right now. And uh, she would have been much happier if over... 30, 40 years ago, she would have followed the writing and teaching career that seemed to enthrall her then. But you know how these things happen. You know, another person uh, said, oh, nah, you know, this is the woman's time. Go for greatness, you know. Be a lawyer. Be this. Be that. Oh, don't be a teacher. And so under that kind of thinking and pressure, that's what she did. And uh, she has wondered, you know, maybe I could have been a professional singer. I was really good. At least I could have made some extra money doing it. And uh, I'd have been great as a teacher. I would have loved it. Yeah. Another woman loved children all her life, but careers and choices were made and now there's a great career and family pressure and limited possibilities, and the clock is ticking. You know, very few of us live life with no regrets about choices made and the roads that we took. Say, la vie, such is life. I'm simply doing this. Can I encourage you as a part of your life planning and midsummer reflections to revisit some of your first loves? And just see where it takes you, perhaps where it leads you. Let me tell you, as a coach to more than a few people who have had the courage and taken the step to stop doing what they were doing, to fire themselves. I remember the man who had sold insurance for 28 years because his dad wanted him to take over the business he said, I called dad today and said, 
I quit. And life has been good. As I said, I just simply say that as a coach who's done that for a number of people, I can help you. doesn't mean I can assure that you'll be able to do your first love. It may be as silly as me trying to play for the Cubs again, but it's good to visit why I thought that way and why that was appealing to me, what that was saying to me, and then find if in what uh, are some of my first loves might be the possibility for a life now still to be lived well. And who knows? Maybe if you uh, follow your love, the money will follow. Who knows? Just some interesting ideas. I'm Stan Houston. We'll be right back. And we'll be right back to say thank you. I'm thankful for you. You've taken 15 minutes of your time on this uh, weekend to listen to me, and I'm grateful. I'm grateful indeed that you do just that. Uh, Please recommend me to others. I would be grateful. I want this program to go and grow. I want people all around the world to uh, be able to live better to have a greater wisdom, insight, and truth. I want them to have a, hey, real insight. I want them to have greater influence in their life. I want them to make a difference, to have impact. And I want them to have true income. I want good things to come into their life. And part of the way you do that is be a person who's interesting with interesting ideas. So if I can help you again, let me know. StanHouston at gmail.com. Stan Houston at gmail.com. Always close with a benediction. So on this weekend, I pray for you. And I pray that you will be able to have a time of a little bit of good work to finish up the tasks. Some rest, some reflection, some rest. And please take time to uh, worship because that's what you were made for. Best and blessings till next time. Bye for now.